Welcome back to Lemons and Larkspur. My name is Patty and I garden here in Southern California in Zone 9B. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about growing things in small containers. A lot of us don't have a lot of room for large scale flower gardens, um, cutting gardens, all of those things. We grow things in pots and we need to get creative in what we see actually as a vessel to hold flowers or herbs or vegetables or whatever. Today I'm mainly going to deal with flower gardening because that has my heart in the spring because everything is just bursting into bloom. I'm going to show you how I put together a, I think I paid less than $10 um, for a kind of trough planter that I'm actually going to hang on our wooden fence. And then I'm going to show you different ways that I've added pops of color, um, kind of gathering things in mass like you do with a collection in your home. They've always said don't scatter your things here and there gather them into one spot for impact. That's what I've done with, with my flowering pots. And to me, it is one of my favorite things about my garden right now. And when I look at other people's gardens, I've always just been drawn to it. And it's so easy to create in whatever size space you have, whether it's sun or shade or whatever. So we're gonna um, talk a little bit about that today. I'm gonna show you what I've done and hopefully encourage you to give it a try yourself. So I want to thank you for stopping by. I want to thank you for subscribing. There's a lot of new faces here. Let's get to gardening. This is the trough planter that I have been mentioning. I found it actually at Walmart. Um, you can see it's about, I don't know, two feet long and about six inches um, wide. And it is designed, it, they sell you the hardware, it comes with it, uh, with screws here so it can hang on a wall, which is eventually what's going to happen to it. I'm not saying any more about that. So, so basically what I'm going to do is full, fill this with good potting soil and an organic fertilizer and I am going to make a an, and I'm going to make an herb garden in it. One day I'm going to show you all the different places that I have herbs growing in my um, yard. So anytime I need something, I can go pick it. I also use it for the rabbits um, because it's good for their digestive health. And it's good to make tinctures and um, teas and all kinds of things like that for our own health. So today we're just going to get this planted up. I am going to add a few beautiful flowers because I think flowers make any space um, better. So, first off is the soil. Okay, that is how much I have in there, um, about three quarters of the way. I think that's always a good starting point. You can always add more or take some out. And I turned it around because the, I wanted the back facing me so you could see how the front turns out. I'm just making a little trough in the middle to set my plants into. Before I do that, I'm gonna add just a little bit of Dr. Earth Organic. This is tomato, vegetable, and herb fertilizer. Okay, and I have my plants here and you can see um, the majority of them are going in here so I did have a plan for them all along
This is Thai basil. A little different flavor than your um, regular um, sweet basil. I like it for its growing habit. It's very upright and these flowers the bees love. So I always have either Thai basil or um, Tulsi holy basil somewhere in my garden. I'm gonna put this in the middle because I do know that it's going to get tall. And on the other side, because I want to keep this kind of balance, I have a rosemary, which will also get tall and get little purple flowers on it as well. Tuck those in there. Next, I'm going to use one of those little, um, lavenders. And then I also have chamomile. Regular basil. Greek oregano, and both the basil and the oregano have a spilling habit, so that's why I have them in front. I may fit these all in here after all. Okay. What else do I have? And really the only two other things I have are peppermint and thyme. So we know peppermint can be invasive. I think I'm, and actually needs more water than the thyme does. So I'm gonna put the thyme on the side with the lavender, which also does not like a lot of water and put the mint on the side with the chamomile, which doesn't mind a little bit more water. So always trying to think ahead. This one I'm going to be squishing and squeezing in here, but it fits. for the bright sun it is right ahead of me uh, right on top of me but this is my herb garden in a, an eight dollar basket from Walmart um, this will provide me with herbs until uh, the frost comes I may have to change out the pansies the violas because they don't like it when it's really really hot I'll just put a heat loving annual in its place and it will stay beautiful I'm just gonna go ahead and back fill this with soil water it in and then I'm going to tuck it away because I'm not quite ready to show you where it's going to end up. I wish that you could smell this. It smells divine. And there you have it. Looks amazing, smells amazing, will be used in amazing ways.
this is what I'm talking about. Most of the pots in here were less than $10. I know all of them were less than 20. And they were collected over time, as were the flowers in them. But grouped together, what a high dollar look they have. And I can't tell you how much they add to the enjoyment that I find in the garden. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope that I inspired you to plant some flowers, to plant some herbs, to make your space just a place that draws you, that woos you, that calls you. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next video.